Star Wars The Last Jedi. Wait, 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 wait. Don't click on another video just yet. We know you probably weren't happy with the latest Star Wars installment, but we have good news for you. We really think the next one is going to make up for it. Fans weren't so pleased with The Last Jedi, mostly because they tried to make it something else. A Star Wars movie is a very carefully crafted formula. There are certain aspects and certain ingredients that the fans have come to expect after decades of movie releases. The Last Jedi tried to steer the ship in another direction, and that just isn't what people want to see. If it ain't broke, don't break it. That's why The Rise of Skywalker is going to give the fans exactly what they want. Have you ever heard the term fan service? It's when you spoon feed the audience the exact things that they want to see. No frills, no extra fat, no b-sides, just the greatest hits. Judging by the newest trailer of The Rise of Skywalker, that's exactly what we're in for. They tried moving past the standard expected Star Wars themes and attempted to do something new. Perhaps no quote represents this shift greater than when Kylo Ren utters the words, let the past die, kill it if you have to. The makers of The Last Jedi were trying to move away from the franchise's formulaic rut full of good guys versus bad guys struggling, uh, henchmen with terrible aim, and chosen ones with daddy issues. However, based on the reception, it looks like they're going to have to go back to the same well that's been tried, tested, and true without trying anything fancy. The last trailer featured a large heaping of nostalgia, showing off montages of the eight previous movies, emotional shots of the late Carrie Fisher's Princess Leia, and Palpatine's face and voice being present pretty much throughout the whole thing. It's meant to get fans excited that the Star Wars they know and love is back, baby! Over half the latest trailer is made up of flashback moments to some of the most important scenes in Skywalker history. It jumps back to include scenes from A New Hope, all the prequels, and the more recent films. Only does the second half of the video eventually jump into what we can expect from the new movie. In the trailer, we catch a glimpse of a sicko mode C-3PO, who has a newfound, very powerful energy about him that I'm not sure how I feel about. Is he evil? Is he nice? What's with the red eyes? I don't know, they kind of work for him. Perhaps the most impressive shot is when we see hundreds of Star Destroyers hiding in a giant ion storm. You'll notice that these aren't from the First Order. No, 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 no. These are Imperial Star Destroyers. Actually, if we're being super specific, they're Imperial I-Class Star Destroyers. The last time we saw those were in A New Hope in Rogue One. Then the screen goes black and we can hear the memorable sound of Darth Vader struggling with his sleep apnea machine. This could be a massive hint at what's to come, or it could just as easily mean absolutely nothing at all. I'll remind you of the time J.J. Abrams added the background sound effect of an Imperial probe droid to the first trailer of The Force Awakens, which turned out to lead absolutely nowhere. Then we briefly see Rey cosplaying as Darth Maul, and just like that it's done. Excitement renewed. Okay, so what's the biggest takeaway from this trailer? Well, uh, I don't know, Palpatine? The last time we saw this dude, he was free-falling down a reactor shaft and in the easy pass lane to getting blown up in the Death Star numero dos in The Return of the Jedi. Then again, his demise was never actually confirmed, I guess. The idea of bringing him back isn't new either, as it's popped up many times throughout the expanded universe of additional shows and movies. In the past, Emperor Palpatine was obsessed with a sector of the galaxy called the Unknown Regions. He believed that a great source of power radiated from the uncharted region on the edge of mapped space. Here's a bit of a Star Wars history lesson. A couple of years before the Battle of Yavin, Palpatine wanted to develop this region and establish bases, even creating shipbuilding yards out there. Around the time of the Battle of Endor, it's believed that Palpatine ordered for the Eclipse to escape the Unknown Regions, along with whatever remained of the Imperial fleet. The Galactic Civil War ended in the skies right above Jakku, which was right on the edge of the Unknown Regions, and from the remains of that destruction, the First Order slowly rose to power. With all this info in mind, and since Palpatine's presence was present in both trailers to date, could this mean that an Imperial Armada has been kept secret the whole time? Will Palpatine be back in full force, or is he something of a Force Ghost? Or is there another more complicated and confusing answer? This could really make or break the final chapter of the franchise. 
Needless to say, all things considered, fans are pretty excited for what's to come. They're marketing the rise of Skywalker as the end of the Star Wars saga, so this will surely have audiences coming out in droves. Consider for a moment how much more Avengers Endgame made compared to Avengers Infinity War. 2.8 billion to just 2 billion in worldwide box office revenue. By that logic, there must have been a large number of people who saw Endgame in theaters who didn't see Infinity War, or perhaps any other MCU movie. People get worked up over a conclusion, and that appears to be what we're about to get. The Last Jedi grossed $1.3 billion worldwide at the box office, so I think it's a safe bet to say that the rise of Skywalker will eclipse that number. I mean, just off of the name alone, can we talk about the title for a hot second? Everybody knows the Skywalker moniker carries some serious weight to it. This ain't no A New Hope or Rogue One vague kind of nonsense. The most detailed they've gotten is mentioning clones, Sith, Jedis, or the Empire in the title, but never have they named names quite like this before. It's pretty obvious that they'll be leaning into the nostalgia pretty hard since they're bringing the MVP of the entire series out of retirement. It's comeback season for Luke, which they're hoping means fans of all ages flock to theaters. Even if he is washed up, if Michael Jordan decided to play one more season for the Chicago Bulls, I'd watch every single game. Luke Skywalker is just one of those names that people will be interested in under any circumstance. Sure, there's still going to be more Star Wars content to come, but The Rise of Skywalker is looking like the final installment of the main film storyline. It will more than likely wrap up decades of storyline and give some kind of closure to the saga without closing the book on Star Wars as a brand. Then again, they might struggle without the names and faces that the fans are so enamored with. After all, like we said before, The Last Jedi tried to do something new, and we know now that it didn't work. If you think about it, audiences don't really show up for brands anymore. Instead, people are going to movies because they like characters. They see films like Venom or Bohemian Rhapsody because they want to see Venom and Freddie Mercury. Just look at how a revamped Star Trek cast played out. People were less than enthused by the latest installment because it didn't feature the characters they know and love. The name alone isn't strong enough to survive off of. And if audiences only showed up to The Force Awakens because it was a sequel to Return of the Jedi and featured Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and Princess Leia, then they're in for serious trouble moving forward. So what else can we expect from the people over at Star Wars HQ? The shows announced for the upcoming Disney Plus streaming service are Jon Favreau's The Mandalorian, which takes place five years after Return of the Jedi, a Rogue One prequel, and Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Those projects will take place between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. The animated Clone Wars and Rebels took place between Episode 3 and 4. Resistance takes place during the events of The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. David Benioff and D.B. Weiss have plans for some movies as well, but those are rumored to take place 4,000 years prior to The Phantom Menace. All that to say, the rise of Skywalker might very well be the absolute end of the line. Fans are extra excited about this Mandalorian series, which is scheduled to premiere on Disney Plus in November. The series takes place five years after Return of the Jedi and follows one Mandalorian gunfighter out beyond the reaches of the New Republic. It's like a space western. What's fascinating is that Disney will be releasing these episodes on a weekly basis, kind of like classic television, rather than the have-it-all-at-once model that Netflix has gotten us so accustomed to. All this is to say that The Rise of Skywalker will completely and utterly exist to service its fans. It'll be chock full of all the nostalgia and callbacks that you've been craving, and should scratch every itch that you've been wanting to scratch. Expect a lot of familiar faces, weapons, ships, and terms. Expect some awesome action, and expect a conclusion that'll try to wrap things up in a way that won't agitate everyone. They're most likely going to want to play it safe when dealing with a final conclusion, rather than go rogue and risk pissing people off. After all, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss would never take something that's beloved by legions of fans and rush a lazy ending. They would never do that. What do you think? How do you feel about the upcoming Star Wars finale? Are you excited? Nervous? A bit of column A, a bit of column B? Drop a comment in the section down below letting us know your thoughts on the rise of Skywalker. 
Will it make up for The Last Jedi, or will it just be more of the same? Let us know what you think. Before you go, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Also, be sure to subscribe to Screen Rant to stay up to date on all of our latest releases. Until next time, bye!